There's a lot of nonsense online when it comes to women's self-defense. But with so much misinformation, which martial arts are actually the best when it comes to a smaller woman defending against a bigger attacker? In order to find out, I asked Amber Steklinski, a lifelong martial artist and self-defense expert from fit to fight, to rank the best and worst martial arts for women's self-defense, starting with judo. Judo in terms of, of effectiveness is pretty incredible. You can't deny it. Anyone who's alive this century has seen Ronda Rousey fight. It has some super effectiveness to uh, it. If we're focusing on just women's self-defense, Yes, I'll factor in ability of the average person. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to knock judo down a little bit. I don't think that's a very easy entrance kind of sport. The cost to enter into judo is going to be a pretty physically capable body to get in there and keep going. So that's going to take it a little bit down in terms of self-defense. However, self-protection is everything I do before like something happens, right? Self-defense mm -hmm. typically looks like someone already getting their hands on me. And so so for that, it it ranks pretty high. There, I'm going to put it at a B for now. We'll see how the conversation goes. Right. Taekwondo. Man. Okay. So I do have Taekwondo background. I spent years in it. I was a Taekwondo black belt child teaching adults how to Taekwondo. <laughs> I should have put this caveat before. Like I, I've trained a little bit of judo. I wouldn't say I'm a judo practitioner. Whereas I can say like I have been in the culture of Taekwondo and experienced it pretty well. Now, my rating is probably more accurate for Taekwondo versus judo because I haven't experienced those. But man, Taekwondo can do a really good job of, of messing you up. I'm going to go backwards. So for judo, we started like, okay, well, if it was up here, I have to knock it down for these things. Taekwondo, I'm starting it pretty low and I'm raising it up just a bit. Uh, Taekwondo point sparring will will mess you up. But there there is a lot of confidence and discipline developed. And I think a lot of that helps make you less of a target. Um, so there's my positive pitch towards Taekwondo. But most of it going to get you in trouble if you really try to use it in a fight. To start with just the stance. It's ranking down there at like, it's not an F, but I'm thinking more in the D minus D category. Let's call it D. This is a big one. You mentioned like so many schools teaching BJJ and suddenly they're like, hey, we are the best self-defense school. And, self -defense. and I'm like, uh, are you really doing self-defense or is it just jujitsu? So I'm really curious right. about your BJJ comment. Yeah. And again, like the caveats of not all BJJ practitioners are the same. And I'm sure there are BJJ schools offering self-defense and they start standing. And I'm not throwing everybody under the bus, um, but we're going to throw a good handful of them. It's because you, it's marketing, right? What do people want? Well, if they're not looking to be a world champion, they want to get in shape and they want to do something that has some kind of value. Well, what's the quickest, you know, way to shortcut the value proposition? And it's okay, well, you can use it to protect yourself potentially. And so yeah, the jujitsu schools offer their one hour self-defense seminar, probably get some signups off of it. And let's say even if they start on their feet in the self-defense workshop and teach some kind of like high cover structure or whatever, and then they just go to the ground and live there, like you're never going to see that high cover structure again in regular classes by and large. And you can get away with it. I mean, truly with with all of these, you could take any one of those logos and put self-defense on the outside, underneath it, whatever, and you can get away with it because most people aren't going to have to use it. So there's got to be something else. I'm actually surprised. Um, I'm going to put it below judo because at least judo, I guess, starts standing. I'm going to put jujitsu as a great middle of the road C kind of option. C. Yeah. A lot of jujitsu people are going to be like, what is happening? <laughs> I know. Oh. I'm I'm so excited to lose my rank and start over. Because <laughs> if you do end up having to protect yourself and somebody does get you on the ground and and mounts yours in your guard or something now jujitsu is triple s like <laughs> if you want to call it that but were there things i could have done to not end up alone with that person in that situation on the ground with them where they wanted to be and the answer has to be yes i mean are there situations where that wouldn't have been true probably but there are other martial arts out there that will hopefully keep you from that position ultimately i guess at the highest expression of self-defense is to me not really having to use it, being confident, being aware, you know, all of the, the self-protection that goes into not being in a bad place. I think that's what we ultimately look for. And then everything else, the actual physical skills are just a great way to stay in shape and stay fit and stay healthy because that's more than likely what's going to be our downfall and demise anyway. Aikido. Now, a uh, quick note. So that was my martial art. I'm 
disillusioned by dramatically. Uh, what are your thoughts about Aikido? I never took Aikido. I didn't really mention this in Taekwondo, but some elements of Taekwondo do work. I think overall, the structure of it is a detriment if you're focused on point sparring and you don't get a chance to like really go all out, but some elements do work. And so I feel like Aikido has that same kind of issue where like some of this does work. Just yesterday in Jiu-Jitsu, I did like a wrist lock takedown that I'm sure is Aikido related. Would it have worked if I tried it again a second time? on that same person? No, absolutely not. Now she knows like I'm not getting away with that. But it's it's not that these things don't work. It's whether the average person training at whatever amount they can fit within their life is going to have a more safer experience in life because of it. Aikido for me, let's throw it with Taekwondo and the D category. Like Mm. it's got some stuff, but it it can also, it looks so soft in practice. It is. Yeah, it's super soft. I would easily give it even like less of a score than D. Some movements you can make them functional, but the training Mm -hmm methodology is so as you called it soft feels like oh one day we're gonna go hard and you never do and then (laughs) when reality when reality hits you and i've been uh, attacked multiple times it just doesn't click like there's such a huge difference between what you experience in the dojo and what you experience in reality that the brain just doesn't connect the dots we have people that come into the gyms all the time and they've never done anything and they'll tell me about whatever happened to them and they want to know if they did the right thing and i'm like you're here and alive yeah you did like absolutely 100 percent are there better things you could have maybe done? I don't know. I'll never be in that exact situation. You know, we can't sit here and, and Monday quarterback it, but you you survived. So yes, you did the right thing. This is a capoeira guy. There was a capoeira school on my way from my house to my high school and mm-hmm. we passed it every day. And I was always like, that would be so cool yeah. and fun and so interesting. We never went in and I always wanted to try it again. So we have to look at the general population. Can they do that? Probably not. It does stay standing. We can give it that, I suppose. In my experience, which is very little, just internet research, watching it, I, it doesn't deal with a lot of the self-protection aspects. It's literally supposed to be disguised self-defense training, which I feel like is kind of like, we're going to build a house, but we're going to build it without the right tools for the job, just in case we don't have the right tools. And so it, it's great. And will make you feel pretty proud that you could build the house without the right tools, but it's not a very sturdy house and didn't actually help you prepare to build a house in the future when you do have the right tools. So that's going to be low. Man, I feel bad hitting anything at F. So I, I'm going to pull the Canadian <laughs> card and keep it at a D minus. <laughs> See, I wonder if we're going to hit some Fs. <laughs> now I'm curious. Traditional jiu-jitsu. I don't have a lot of experience with it. I do know there's a difference between Brazilian jiu-jitsu and more kind of traditional Japanese jiu-jitsu. I don't know enough other than to just kind of take a guess and throw it up there. I think it has a little bit more standing work than BJJ. And I'm going to give it some credit for not going all over the internet saying, that it's a self-defense organization. It teaches women self-defense and stuff. So I'm, I'm going to put it at a B minus um, with very little reasoning, except uh, it looks it looks pretty imbalanced this way. This is a symbol of Jeet Kune Do. Because yes. I know people who do Jeet Kune Do and I'm like, Ugh, okay. And then I know who, who people who do Jeet Kune Do and I'm like, yeah, I, I don't want to be anywhere near you or mess with you at all. With that being my perception from somebody within the industry, there's some validity to it, but there is clearly some non validity. I'm going to put that kind of low. I don't feel right putting it over Taekwondo and Aikido since I have an idea of what those Mm -hmm. are. I'm going to throw it on that D column for me. I never tried Jeet Kune Do myself either, but it just seems the conversation always goes to like what you said. There are some schools which do pressure testing and they're apparently pretty good, but then there's so many where they never do pressure test a lot of fancy techniques, which is crazy because that's not what Bruce Lee was about. But even the ones which are functional, it sounds like that they are often, they're doing too much. They're learning 20 different things or right, martial arts at right. the same time. And it's like, you don't get very good at any of them. So. Especially then when you look at a self-defense standpoint, like, would it be cool for everybody to kind of follow my path, live a life of self-defense and training? And it's just what you started doing as a kid and never stopped. I think that'd be pretty cool. That'd be great for me as a gym owner. I- I'd love it. Um, you don't have to worry about retention. You get them in the door, you keep them forever. But the reality is it's going to be a blip on their radar. It's going to be something they do for six months, maybe a year, if you're lucky, a couple years, they've got their life to move on with. So I do think you're going to make people less safe if you give them all of these different options and different things they can do and teach them in a very, this happens, you respond to this kind of way. Clear, straight line, feed them the answers, tell them what to do. Now they're sitting there, something's going down and they're like, okay, well, is it this thing? Is it the other thing? Do I respond this way? Do I respond that way? Rather than being able to keep their cool, keep their calm, go back to like a principle-based learning style and really be able to evaluate the situation and make some decisions, which is hard to do, especially if you 
haven't pressure tested anything or put stress on anything you're doing for starters. That's actually exactly what happened to me with Aikido. There were very specific answers. If they grab you like this, you do technique A or B or C. If they grab uh-huh. you like this, you do technique yeah. D, E, and F. I'm like, oh my God, he grabbed me like, oh, wait, let me remember which technique is it. And it's like, right. it just let me, doesn't. Let me get a measuring tape. How far yeah. are you? So I started in Kempo, Shaolin Kempo, six to eight in terms of my ages. The interesting thing for me is that built a really strong base for me to, to go throughout the rest of my training with, because it, it taught me to be very precise and technical. And as a smaller person, that became so important for actually making these jujitsu techniques work against larger people. Like I learned to take in more detail, even than what the coach was giving me because of that. That's going to give a good amount of self-defense that I'm going to push it up that scale for. And you know, I'm biased. It is what it is. I would put Kempo closer to that B minus C range. I'm going to put it B minus because I don't know, I feel better about it than jujitsu some days. It has a strong place in my heart as you know, the first martial art I did. Um, In the moment, did knowing to put my foot at this slight tiny angle help my self-defense no not at that moment like that wasn't going to be the make or break thing but down the road recognizing that my coach's foot isn't here it's here and realizing that helps me do whatever comes next that turned into a big deal they get a little bit of uh, benefit from that i also love that you mentioned about the confidence and attacker they don't go for the oh this person looks like a badass i'm going to attack that person it's (laughs) and it's so if you're confident you may be less of a chosen potential victim and if a martial yeah. art gives you that confidence obviously sometimes it can be false confidence and that's not great I guess but that's, still, yeah. that's not great until something actually happens you know sure. like, I'm not going to rest my head on that like oh, I'm giving people confidence this stuff may or may not actually work you know but they'll probably never experience it like I, I would not be able to sleep at night knowing that and I sleep very well at night but like again there are people out there just fine with that they know they're instilling some confidence and they're probably not going to be able to defend themselves but whatever it is what it is We talked about how they can get away with that already, but really like I would rather not have somebody come back to me and be like, that two years of training really paid off. This dude held me at gunpoint and I did this cool disarm and whatever and and all that kind of thing. I'd be like, oh my God, I'm glad you're so, you're okay. I wouldn't be like celebrating with them. Whereas I got a text the other day from somebody who trains with us. This dude cut me off in traffic and I beeped my horn and he got out of his car with a knife and I locked my doors and I just kind of put my hands up and I angled my car so I could hit him with it if I needed to. And nothing happened. And it's not going to be in the front page newspaper and student who trained fit to fight wards off knife attackers but that's okay like i would so much rather situations not evolve and so if you don't cover that in your training you're never going to hit that s category for me it's not all jujitsu schools ignore that i'm sure there are plenty of jeet kundo aikido talking about the preemptive side of things but by and large a lot of these martial arts miss that wrestling if i could i would kind of divide this into two categories between like youth wrestling and Mm. adults I truly think youth wrestling, youth BJJ maybe to really just youth sports that are aggressive and involve real contact and give you an ability to really kind of put forth some effort are so good in terms of developing strength, really just from the inside out. Kids who who understand that they can take an impact and, and be hit and bumped around and they'll be okay are so much stronger, just even emotionally than kids who have never felt resistance and pressure physically. And then they, they, feel pressure and and that kind of thing emotionally and don't know how to handle it and don't realize that they're going to be okay and they can keep going through it and breathe through it. I really like wrestling in terms of of youth confidence. I mean, discipline could be here or there, but but truly just the confidence and in, in, intrapersonal skills and interpersonal skills they develop. If I'm an adult looking for self-defense and I go to wrestling, I feel like that's not a long-lived endeavor. Does it have effectiveness for sure. Does it usually cover the the preemption and the different things that go around with that and a striking standpoint? Not really. If we're looking like towards the women's self-defense side, it's going to go towards that C with jujitsu. And uh, if we want to redo this call with like little kid characters in the windows, like <laughs> these would be very different. <laughs> would you put wrestling in a different place if it wasn't for women's self-defense? I don't think so. I think it would land in the same place. Truly the difference between something that's going to be good for men's self-defense and women's self self-defense isn't going to exist in the physical skill for sure. It's probably not even going to exist in the philosophy. It's more going to exist in the environment. Is the environment welcoming to women to where they feel safe and comfortable there? So they're actually going to continue to come and understanding the nuances of what's happening within a fight where men, it might be more ego driven, women, it might be more domestic. And so there's another barrier possibly there to 
discuss, which is going all out on somebody that you trusted or thought had your best interests in mind. But the physical skills are what they are. And what I do like about jujitsu and wrestling is it's possible to go pretty much 100%. Like you can really throw somebody, you can really sweep somebody, you can't fall back as hard as you want and armbar them. But as opposed to striking arts, where you probably, again, as an average practitioner, aren't going to get the chance to hit somebody in the face as hard as you possibly can bare knuckle and see how they respond to that, you do at least get to feel a little bit of that in in the wrestling dominated arts. So this is Carly Escrima, RNS, which is essentially Filipino martial arts. Ooh, I feel like this one could be all across the board. You could probably put it in every category and be right. And I probably wouldn't have said that prior to meeting a Balintawak Arnis coach, Coach Bobby Tabata. Talking with him, he understands it and he gets it. And he's an yeah. Arnis instructor, but he's also been in some real life incidents and fights and understands the reality of what that looks like too. I'm not going to put that too high even though I do have experience with one that that's pretty high up there on the list. I do feel like for the most part, this kind of art does require a lot of time, kind of like with Aikido, like it requires a lot of time to really get good at it. And if you can get really good at it, definitely for sure, it's it's got some solid foundations. But if we're talking about the average person and the average woman going into a self-defense class, probably not super effective. I think if I had some experience with it, I might maybe put it higher, but since I'm just an outsider, I'm going to throw it in with the D realm. Got it. Yep. Boxing. Yeah. Ooh. Have you been to a, like a real boxing gym? I'm actually, that's my focus for the past year. Oh. I, I love boxing. Okay. Uh, but awesome. I, I'm also going to one which is, they're considerate. They're looking at the science of it. They're making sure you're taking breaks if we're going harder for a while. If they're smart. Cool. That's awesome. I did maybe two or three classes at like a real boxing gym. I was so terrified. I'm terrified anywhere of going into like a new place. Me too. But way. usually <laughs> it's not as bad with gyms because like, I'm like, well, at least I kind of know what I'm doing. But yeah, no, I was supposed to have white wraps and I'm like the lightest color I have in my gear is like this lime green because colors, man, like I love it. I was already like off put that I didn't have the right color wraps to be working there. Okay, um, strange. I didn't get to punch a lot of things. I definitely didn't get to punch them very hard. I was on a double end bag. I did a little bit of work on a heavy bag with the coach. It, it was a very interesting experience. Like true, like boxing gym, like you might be ignored for months, I think. But uh, boxing as a sport, and obviously I don't know it in a standalone system, but I I mean, a jab is a jab, a cross is a cross. The striking side, I think, is pretty well developed. But I'm going to give it over kickboxing just because I'm looking at it right next to each other. Yes. Um, is that at the very least, you keep your feet planted so you don't run into this. Like, Yeah, you know how to kick, but you haven't actually done it against a bigger person resisting opponent and you end up on your back. And now you needed your three years of jiu-jitsu along with your three years of kickboxing kind of thing. I put boxing around maybe like a, a B minus. Mm. Ultimately, you're going to have to beat the daylights out of somebody if you do end up in an altercation. Yeah. considering boxing doesn't co- cover like preemption, self-protection, that kind of thing. The way you end fights are by taking somebody's consciousness or taking their willingness to fight. So either literally beating them into unconsciousness or beating them so bad they want to retreat, run away. It makes it a little bit little bit tougher to, to finish that fight and get away, possibly. How does that lead into kickboxing? Not to mention the number of people that tell me they know kickboxing. Um, and then I'm like, okay, cool, throw a jab. And they're like, what? And I'm like, <laughs> you told me you did kickboxing or they'll say boxing, whatever. And the proliferation of kickboxing for fitness, but not being honest that it isn't kickboxing has done a detriment to that name. Um, I'm talking like heavy bag fitness classes, Mm. CKO, that kind of stuff. So Mm. people think they know something, but they really, they don't. Mm. Yes, they maybe have learned how to strike. They've learned how to punch enough that they're not hurting themselves with 12 ounce gloves on. I mean, it's something. But in terms of self-defense, I think there's a a pretty good risk of false confidence there. But kickboxing in and of itself, if I am actually working against a resisting opponent, there's solid things to it. I'd put it with the C category. Is kickboxing below boxing because of the reason you mentioned before, which is kicking in self-defense is usually a dangerous thing to do? I wouldn't say it's usually a dangerous thing to do, but again, for the average practitioner, we're talking women's self-defense, typically smaller than their aggressor. Like, I, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> I know it's pass. <laughs> you can pass for sure. Just the... Uh... Maybe some arguments why? No, just define it. Right. Yeah, I know. That's the hard part because I guess there's different styles. If I would define it, you're walking down the street and you see like, hey, karate, we're teaching self-defense. What's your first thought and impression? Like, oh, is this a good place or not? Yeah, karate with the word self-defense next to it gives me some unpleasant feelings to it. Like I still do use the term karate because it's so much easier than your, your kid is learning a variety of martial arts. 
It is martial arts that are mixed, mixed martial arts, but it's not mixed martial arts. And so I can skip all of that and be like, it's karate. <laughs> it's that's such a kid connotation. What adult goes online and is like, let me find some karate classes. Like, I feel like we've at least evolved as a society to where they look up whatever their goal is. Like, let me look up some self-defense classes. I don't know a lot of adults like, you know what? I need more discipline and focus in my life. I need to find a karate school. Like, my feeling is it's very youth focused as a term. It's likely not even looked at or considered for as adults. It does some catch all for having some variety of punches and kicks and training, but mostly I'm going to put it at a D minus. I tried really hard to go for F. I just couldn't do it. <laughs> Let's see. We still have a few left. With Karmaga, I heard it can be either like S or F because there's a yep. lack of quality control. For truly all of this, there's such a lack of quality control, which is so nice. We're unregulated, which is great. The government doesn't need to be involved mm -hmm. in my life and what I'm doing and what I'm teaching and how I teach it. But then also it's kind of terrifying because we're unregulated and anyone can teach whatever they want and call it whatever they want. And I feel like Krav Maga got such a push forward as being synonymous to self-defense that Taekwondo schools were like, yeah, we teach Krav Maga too. The waters got diluted where Krav Maga, at least from the physical physical skill side that is pretty high on that list. It can also be very, very low done wrong. I'm still going to favor it. It does have a little bit more tendency to deal with the preemptive side and the de-escalation side, not all. And it certainly doesn't always have that big field of vision, but also I'm, I'm biased and I can do what I want. It's my interview. So I'm going to do an yes. A minus. Okay. <laughs> nice. Muay Thai. Oh man. So in Muay Thai's defense, I feel like it's been able to retain its image more so than like kickboxing. There aren't a lot of schools saying they do Muay Thai and they're just hitting heavy bags for fitness. The striking art, the ability to use all different limbs definitely plays a big role in terms of the physical side of self-defense. There's a little bit of maybe some hesitancy in terms of like the mental picture I feel like someone might get when you say Muay Thai is definitely a dude in short, short, sweaty, bloodying people up. I think there's an image issue that maybe wouldn't attract women to it, but the art in and of itself, having self-defense application is pretty solid. It misses a lot of the body wrestling that I think is super important for self-defense, but it does cover clinch type controls. I'm going to put it at B. Conscious that MMA is not a martial art. There's also the argument that these days you can see a school which is like, we are an MMA gym. We're teaching MMA, yeah. which, you know, usually is a combination of specific things. So when yeah. you see a school being like MMA school, how good is that for women's self-defense generally? I'm glad you phrased it that way because generally the term MMA would be, be a pretty big uh, turnoff. I feel like it lends itself more to fighting for fighting's sake. We have fun bloodying each other up and choking each other unconscious. Not all schools, caveats, allegedly, allegedly, but the term, so like with, with Fit to Fight, we use the term modern Krav Maga and in our marketing, we talk about how it incorporates Krav Maga and wrestling and jujitsu and looks at a, a well-rounded system. When I hear mixed martial arts, I think striking in jujitsu with the goal of punching somebody into the ground. I think using that that term, if you were trying to attract people for, for more self-defense focus is mostly going to be to a detriment. Obviously, the skills you develop are good for self-defense, have validity and are pressure tested on a very large screen. But the, the term and the practice probably won't draw the crowd that we're talking about. I'm going to go ahead and send the internet after me. Let's put that <laughs> one in F. Oh my Let's go for goodness. It. That'll be interesting for the comment section. Bing Chen. Mostly, I think about people hitting wooden arms on dubbies. I took Kung Fu for about six months. That's not enough time to know anything about it, except that I do know for sure in six months at Kung Fu, you will not learn anything that's going to help you for self-defense. I learned how to stay in a horse stance forever. I learned a really cool stance form that for some reason is stuck in my mind and I can still do to this day. And I learned how to do a kip up, surprisingly. So in my limited experience, I would throw that down there with our MMA friends, but not all Kung Fu created equal. I don't think I did Wing Chun. To make it easy, let's say this is Kung Fu. Would that be an F? Yeah, Kung Fu is an F for me. Sistema? No personal experience. I have nothing but poor thoughts and interactions based on the internet and what the internet serves me. It seems like a horrible way to learn self-defense and a, a great way to get yourself in trouble. I would put that down there in the F column too. Yeah. Not all Sistema, of course, but I can't in good consciousness put it any higher than that. Does Sambo bring up any thoughts? Uh, I have experience with somebody who was a combat Sambo 
combo black belts. And that is my only experience. And that person is not one to be trifled with, but also the general population is not like him. They just, again, the mindset of savageness, I guess, when it comes mm. to, to fighting somebody is just very different. So basically I'm going to say, no, I, I really don't have any kind of training or experience in it. I would think it falls into C with kind of BJJ wrestling, kickboxing. I right. could be wrong. Genjutsu. Uh, we're going to call it F. We'll really? It F. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Just, uh, you just really surprised. Uh, in one word, LARPing. And, and we just did a, our firearm course and talked a little bit about this because I went around and asked everybody before we started what your experience with firearms are. And some people, you know, they went hunting with their dad. They do shooting competitions and things like that. And the sample set I'm working with, they all understand that these things don't translate into fighting, but a lot of people don't. Mostly people think that the, this gun is this magic thing and it's going to keep me out of trouble. And that's not true. And that'll probably put you in more trouble. But the mm -hmm. biggest thing for me is you've got single mom that's taking a, a room clearing course. They're telling her, all right, well, you drive up to your house and your kid's in the car and the front door's bashed in. Here we go. Why is she going into her house? Like if there is not a child in there to save, it's in her car. Like leave, leave. Yeah. What are you talking about? Is it a cool skill? Sure. Fine. Like if that's how you want to spend your time. Okay. But that's not making you safer. You just put yourself in more harm. If I'm in my house, I might need to get to my kid because I hear a noise or something happens. Maybe there are some, some tactical things to do, but it's turned into like an entire system rather than a subset of the bigger picture. I've seen so many scenarios where it's like, why are we even going in that room? Not all of them. I'm sure their instructor's doing it sure. right. But understanding that there should be a platform for being able to integrate your firearm into fighting or jujitsu or whatever it is. But by and large, what I see is not not great. Now this is men's self-defense. Uh, <laughs> did you switch around something? My thing going through women's self-defense is what are the biggest concerns they have? What are the barriers to entry for getting started in something like this? Because people need self-defense. Well, if they do realize they need training, what's the biggest barrier? And I think a lot of it for women is the barrier to entry and, and feeling like you're going to be overwhelmed and hurt and all this kind of stuff. But the barrier for entry in terms of men the world is a little bit different. I feel like it's typically more of, if I go in somewhere, I have to admit that I don't know how to protect myself right now. That machismo just makes it a little bit different. And this is where I redeem myself. And I'm we're about to find out the YouTube commenters who didn't watch the whole video yeah. is for, for men's, I think MMA would be higher. I think that would maybe be up at, at a B minus. Anyone who could get through their first class and keep going would do great. I think some dudes would be ego checked at the door and, and leave. But I think the average person would walk in, do some real training, realize they aren't ready and stay with it. Assuming it's still a supportive environment. Others, you keep them the same. I'd keep them pretty much the same. Why is there no S martial art? People are so different. Even if there were a perfect martial art for women's self-defense, one, it, it would be some kind of combination. Like it wouldn't just be this one standalone thing. I teach women's self-defense courses pretty regularly and they look different every time based on differences in the group, based on what's going on in the world at that point. I would have a hard time putting anything in an S category, given how different people are, their experiences, their skill sets. Are they good at talking? Because if you're a really good talker, you might not need any of the physical skills and you should just go to improv classes. Improv classes might be S. It's so much on the instructor to instill yeah. like a true confidence and understanding of what our skills are. I get sometimes questions. Hey, I live in India or whatever. There's this program for self-defense. Do you think it's legit? When yeah. somebody asks you that question, what are you looking for to decide whether that's a good program or not for women's self-defense? That's a fantastic question. And so typically I'll also tell them like, go try a class. Or if you're not comfortable trying a class right from get-go, go watch. And you'll be able to tell a lot by how students interact with the instructors, how students interact with each other, the general environment and and. Uh, vibe, as the kids say, um, that you get from being there and being around people with the understanding that it's incredibly uncomfortable. You're going to be nervous. It's, you're not going to walk in and just feel at home, probably. Um, and that's okay. But you want to see how the interactions are going and if you're comfortable with them. But for me, when I get that list back of like, well, here are three or four places I'm looking at, I usually go to their social media first, typically Instagram, and I take a look at the pictures they're posting. If it's all stock photos, I'm less interested, hopefully. And typically it's photos of people actually working and training in their facility. So I'm looking to see, is there diversity in what they're doing? Do people look like they're enjoying themselves and having fun? Are there women in their photos? Are there women partnered with other women? Are there women partnered with men? Just as kind of a quick look, not that you have to be social media expert to run your school, but if you're just kind of posting things on the day to day, those are some of the things that the public should be able to see and look at easily. So that's one quick way to kind of get a feel for it. Where can people find more information about you? Fit2Fight.com. If they reach out there, 
there, they will get to me. Um, One of my next seminars I'm doing is at our Fit to Fight Coach Camp in November here in Charlotte. My segment is on drills for skills and thrills. And I deal a lot with drills that give a your students a realistic understanding of what their abilities are and they don't build false confidence or completely ruin them in that time. You can find me on Instagram or Facebook at Amber Thighs. But yeah, you'll find me at Fit to Fight. All contact forms will get to me. If you want to see the best martial arts ranked by pro MMA fighter, click on this video right here. And until next time, keep owning your journey.